Hey everyone, today let's talk about Apple shipments falling more than 40%, then we'll talk Taiwan Semiconductor, then we'll do a quick reminder for the economic calendar, then we'll get into the charts, then we'll look at my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Apple shipments fell more than 40%, worse than rivals. And anytime something affects the biggest company in the world, that's obviously going to affect the major indices. So let's get into the details here. They say Apple computers fell 40.5% year over year for the first quarter of 2023 amid a broader contraction in consumer demand. So again, this is another potential indicator of economic slowing. We've talked about this many times. Earnings per share is expected to contract here in Q1. And we've really seen that across a lot of different companies. But what's interesting here is that this is the biggest company in the world and that they actually contracted more than their competitors. Obviously, they're going to have difficult comps. They did extremely well during COVID and really even into 2022, they did well. But now we're finally seeing an actual contraction here. I also mentioned that their market share dropped from 8.6% to 7.2%. And they even say that this is not unexpected when you factor in that iPad sales also decreased a pretty substantial amount. Revenue fell 28.66% year over year in December. And Tim Cook mentioned that this is a challenging macroeconomic environment. As a result of this, Apple shares were down 2% in early trading. And we'll take a look at that on the charts. And they are set to announce earnings here on 4 May. Moving on to Taiwan Semiconductor, you can see they missed the mark on sales by quite a bit. And this is another big red flag for the economy and specifically for semiconductors. March sales resulted in $16.7 billion, which missed the consensus of $17.2 billion. March revenue fell 15% year over year, compared with the 11% gain from February and a 16% year over year rise in January. So overall, pretty sharp decline here when we were still gaining January and February and March. Now we're pulling back a full 15%. And these two stories actually tie together here a little bit because they do make processors for Apple. And since Apple demand is going down, it makes sense that they're not going to have the same demand. They also mentioned, similar to the last article, worldwide PC shipments fell 29% in the March quarter right after a 28% decline in the December quarter. So two consecutive quarters of steps down. And interestingly here, Micron, another semiconductor manufacturer, actually rallied on Monday after Samsung said it was going to make meaningful cuts in chip production. So Micron benefiting from Samsung's pullback. But overall here, we can see that the chip sector is starting to pull back and demand is softening. And this has been one of the strongest sectors in the market here recently. And if they start to pull back, that seems like we're going to see some weakness in the NASDAQ and probably in the broader markets. Moving over to the economic calendar just for a moment, you can see Tuesday, not a lot on the calendar, but Wednesday's the big day here with core and headline CPI month over month and year over year. Those come out at 8.30 Eastern. So make sure if you hold any positions into the close tomorrow that you're comfortable with those, holding those through CPI data. Expectations are actually for a tick up in core from 5.5 to 5.6. Month over month is supposed to step down from 0.5 to 0.4. And then headline numbers stepping down from 0.4 to 0.2 and year over year 6 to 5.2. And then the next day, we do have PPI, not as big of an impact, but it's definitely interesting. And then we have initial jobless claims as we do on Thursdays. And finally, to close out the week here, we have core retail sales and headline retail sales coming out at 8.30 Eastern on Friday. Moving over to the charts here, looking at the S&P 500 on the hour and the daily chart, you can see we fell really strongly in the pre-market session, tested those previous lows, and then pretty much rallied throughout the day. And right at the close here, we took out yesterday's high. You can see that on the daily chart, gap down at the open, and then it was a green bar all day. Looks like we're kind of rallying into that potential for a double top. That was the thesis going into the day. I thought we were going to see pretty much a straight push up here, but we fell super strong in the early session, which was definitely interesting. Not a ton of volume on that move here, but right at the end of the day, lots of volume, strong push, definitely bullish into the close. Daily chart still stepping down. So eventually I do think this is still going to break down. But right now we do have a short term bullish push likely to come back up and retest this previous high around 413. Moving over to the NASDAQ here on the 15 and the four hour, you can see a similar thesis. Had that rally into the close on Thursday. 
moved down very powerfully in the pre-market, retested very close to those lows, didn't get all the way to the wicks, which is interesting. Slightly higher low here, rallied, again, establishing a slightly higher low, and then rallied into the close. You can see that on the four-hour chart. Moved down, wick rejection, rally up, sitting right at the 21 EMA. I added a level here right at yesterday's highs. That'll be a level I'm watching, 318.45. I was also watching this close going back to Wednesday. You can see we came up to that level, got that initial rejection, and then pushed very powerfully through there. So if we pull back a couple of levels of support, watching that 315.98 level, and if we get above 318.45, then we're likely to be pushing back up to that 321.82 level. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here, you can see the Russell came down, tested that very similar level to the previous two days. So you have a triple bottom here at this point, rallied aggressively, pulled back from the 55 EMA here on the hourly chart tested the 9 EMA and then rallied super powerfully into close. With how this was moving, I got a little bit more aggressive here on the Russell going into tomorrow's session. Broke out above these previous highs. You would expect this to be pushing back up to 77.33, the next level of resistance. And this is moving pretty strongly here. It might actually go a little bit higher. That would be interesting, pushing up to maybe 178.50, area of highest volume in this previous consolidation. Overall, Russell looks pretty bullish. Moving over to the Dow on the four hour chart, Similar thesis, candle of indecision on the first candle, bullish push on the second candle, and then after hours here, it looks like we're going a little bit higher. Oil and gas was strong here today again, so the Dow did benefit from that. Momentum, pretty much neutral. RSI, pretty neutral. Quite a bit of volume here today, though, so this might have a little bit more follow through. You'd definitely like to see it push through this previous high here. Jumping out to the daily chart, if we can break out from that high, then we're looking up to 338.42, area of highest volume. And then we have the previous high sitting up at 343.53. Moving over to Apple and Tesla on the hourly chart, you can see we got down, fell, made a new low here on Apple, did rally and close just like everything else, but much, much weaker here, didn't fill the gap. Still sitting below this level, we were watching at 162.51. can see the candle break at that level and then the continuation. This is kind of a weird test of the next level here, but we did get back above it and then rallied into the close. Overall momentum, slightly bullish. RSI still in bearish territory here. And if this does roll over any time before filling the gap tomorrow, then you have to expect that this is a high, a lower high, one more lower high here, which is consistent with the low and the lower low setup that we're seeing. So overall week, moving over to Tesla, a little bit different thesis here, gap down, blew through this level, tested the next level, found rally, tested the next level up, got a little bit of rejection, and then followed through on the next candle right to that area of highest volume. We've been in this zone for a little bit, basically unchanged on the day. RSI sitting at the 50 line, so pretty much neutral. But overall, you would expect this to have a little bit more follow through. We're probably going to retest the 55 EMA here on the hourly chart, which is currently sitting at 188.05. Moving over to staples versus discretionary, you can see staples basically flat from yesterday, gap down, rallied into the close, just below that 7540 level, which continues to hold us to the upside. If we get above that, still watching for 76. But if we continue to chop in this zone and can't get above here, then we have to start looking for a pullback potentially to the bottom of this consolidation at $74.69 or back down at $74. Moving over to discretionary, similar thesis, gap down, found support, rallied into the close, made a slightly higher high from yesterday's high. And we're right at the highs of this consolidation going back to Wednesday. If we can continue the rally, looking for a push back up to 147, the lows from this consolidation in the supply area that I was watching. So overall, discretionary, showing a little bit of strength. Staples still consolidating right at resistance. Moving over to transports here, you can see big push gap down, found support at the 144 rallied super aggressively, got above this area of highest volume on the hourly chart. Looking at the 12 hour here, you can see we're right at that longer term resistance. It's where we were looking for upside resistance. If we can get above that, then we're looking to these previous highs up around 228. And then if we can get above there, then we're probably looking up to around 234, which would be the low going back to 10 February. Overall, short term, very bullish here on transports, which should allow the Dow to go a little bit higher, potentially forecasting that breakout on the Dow. Moving over to semiconductors, 
Talked about semiconductors struggling and pullbacks in demand. Semiconductors continues to rocket higher, still very bullish here. You have multiple lows, found support at the 200 SMA on the hourly chart. Now we're rallying back up to resistance at 257.14. We also have the 55 EMA on the hourly chart sitting just behind that, 257.56. Still remains to be seen if this is going to be kind of a slanted double top or a more consistent double top going back to 23 March to 31 March. But right now, short-term bullish, you have to respect it. We broke out above Thursday's highs and now we're going higher. Moving over to yields just for a moment, you can see they both found a little bit of support. Two-year yield doing a little bit better than the 10-year yield. And this makes sense after the non-farm payrolls came back a little bit stronger. And the probability of 25 basis points is up to around 65% right now. So overall, people are expecting yields to stay fairly strong, at least in the short term. Moving over to the dollar here on the hourly and the daily, you can see we broke out above previous highs, got very strong movement above the 200 SMA. Everything looks bullish here. Getting a slight pullback, but you would expect that to be bought in the short term at least. Got very close to testing the 21 EMA here on the daily chart. Momentum swinging into bullish territory. RSI looking bullish, crossing above the SMA, pushing pretty strongly towards that 50 line. If we can get above that and continue higher, then we should be moving higher on the dollar, which might cause a little bit of a pullback in equities. Definitely interesting to see this bigger move here on the dollar. This is likely what was causing that sell-off in equities early in the session. You can see these strong pushes happened at 6, 7, and then a little bit here in the eight o'clock hours. Then we paused and pulled back a little bit during the market session, which allowed equities to rally at least a little bit. But overall, I still expect the dollar to go higher, which should impact equities to the downside. Moving over to JNK, you can see here, still weak, gap down, rallied, didn't quite fill the gap. Going sideways here on the four hour chart, plenty of upside resistance here at the nine EMA and VWAP, as well as the 144 EMA. Still consolidating, going sideways. Momentum slightly bearish. Momentum on the hourly chart is basically zero, but you can see a little bit of bearish selling here on the last candle of the day on the hourly chart. Overall, still looking for a push onto $91, but if we can break $92, the previous high here, then maybe we push up to 92.30 or 92.50. That would be interesting. But right now, I do expect this to move lower in tomorrow's session. Moving over to TLT here just for a moment on the hourly and the daily, you can see we gapped down, pretty much held within that zone, very close to the lows when we opened, ended up being an island reversal here on the daily chart. You definitely don't like to see it, but there's lots of support here potentially on the daily chart, 200 SMA, all of the EMAs, VWAP, everything's sitting to the downside. And I still expect this to be bought, at least in the short term, but it's fairly expected that's a pullback considering that the non-farms were still so strong. And like I said before, Fed futures are swinging towards the 25 basis points at the next Fed meeting. Finishing up with the charts here on the VIX, you can see another pretty much nothing day. So we gapped up, went sideways, tested 20 level, got rejected from there, falling into the close. We see another push higher here. That would be a higher low setup, potentially looking to break out from resistance. That would be interesting. But right now, still going sideways. Lots of wick to the upside at that 20 level. 1850 continues to hold. Momentum moving in the bullish direction. RSI still bearish on both charts. Momentum in the short term is bearish as well. So still watching this chart, waiting to see what happens. Moving over to my accounts here, you can see I managed to squeak out a pretty small profit despite the volatility that we saw on the queues. I did move those positions down early in the session as well as sell some calls, got squeezed on the calls, took those off and rolled up my puts and managed to make up for those losses. Otherwise, looking at the IWM, these positions continue to pay off to the bullish side. Big rally here, up over 1%, took a 174 put position, got a little bit more aggressive here, $16 profit already, 85 cents on that credit. Otherwise, looking at the queues for tomorrow, you can see I have a 314 and a 315 put. Those have quite a bit of profit already. And I also sold some calls at the end of the session because of the weakness that we were seeing in Apple, as well as that topping formation that we saw in the queues. If we get above Thursday's high, I'll probably take these positions off just to reduce my probability of loss here. But keep in mind, these are at 320 and 321, which is about a 1% move higher from where we are right now. So my break even on this short position is about $3 higher than we are now. And I'm not looking to short right where we are. I just don't think we're going to see another huge push tomorrow. 
certainly could happen. You have to keep your eyes open and make sure you have a plan. Like I said, if we break out above Thursday's high, I'll likely take these positions off and roll my puts up. But if we continue to chop sideways like we have been, then all of these positions should be profitable at the end of the day. Overall, thesis is still sideways on the NASDAQ and more bullish here on the IWM. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of Apple or Taiwan Semiconductor. Are markets going to push higher? Or are we going to see more sideways price action until we eventually get a breakdown? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.